<laughs> what's going on guys uh, my name is Darwin uh, welcome back to this channel that's all about architecture engineering and construction and where we're also all about uh, bettering the African narrative uh, if you're new to this channel uh, you're welcome I hope you'll find this very productive and helpful to you and please if you find it that way uh, please subscribe to the channel and also for the returning subscribers thank you very much for following thank you for the feedback Thank you for everything. Um, so uh, without wasting a lot of time, I know you guys have heard about different debates about which one is cheaper, whether to use clay bricks or to use hollow blocks, you know. Um, you've had a lot of conspiracies, a lot of theories here and there. Uh, so uh, that is actually why I'm here. Um, uh, with practical calculations, I want to explain to you from a layman's perspective. I want to break down for you how much you should be spending on masonry. Um, if you choose to use either clay bricks or you choose to use hollow blocks, you know, I want to do this for you from a practical standpoint, of course, for a layman. Uh, so by the end of this video, you should be able to determine or to make a decision whether you are for hollow blocks or you are for clay bricks or you're actually for mud bricks. Okay, uh, this is basically going to be based on cost. Uh, of course, there are many other factors that we can consider when we are, choose when we are making these choices. But these uh, clay bricks, mud bricks, and hollow blocks have all, over time, surely, proven to meet all the general functional requirements of a wall. That is strength, uh, stability, and durability. Of course, there are many other factors that we can consider, really. A factor has to do with acoustic properties, that is soundproofing properties and sound transmission properties. Uh, factors has to do with workmanship, you know, uh, quite a lot of things, the fluorescence. But anyway, today is not an engineering class, so we are basically going to be understanding these things from a cost perspective, and then later on we can add in the other factors, okay? So I'm going to have basically three columns. Right here, we are going to have clay bricks, okay? Here we are going to have uh, clay bricks as well. And here we are going to have our hollow blocks. Okay, um, so what we are basically considering, we are considering our basic wall that is 3 meters in length and 3 meters in height. Okay, uh, that means our wall is actually going to be 9 square meters of a wall. So we are going to see if we are using all these bricks. Of course, these, I'm, I'm putting these two here as clay bricks, but here we are using a stretcher bond. And right here, we are going to be using a header bond. Okay, uh, so for those of you who are getting confused, uh, clay bricks, uh, uh, clay bricks. If we organize, if we arrange them in the format in the stretcher bond, uh, it means that the shorter side of the brick is actually forming the thickness of the wall. And then for header bond, it means that uh, the longer side of the brick is actually forming the thickness of the wall. And then for hollow blocks, you always use stretcher bond. Okay. Now these two main ones, these ones are the ones we usually mainly consider if you're planning to use a roof that has a that you're going to roof with clay tiles, that you're going to roof with tiles, okay? Uh, that is a matebula. Yes, because you want your walls to be as strong, you, because you want to be your walls to be strong enough to take on that load that comes from the heavy roof tiles, okay? So with clay bricks uh, in this stretcher format, uh, for every one square meter, you will need just about, uh, you need about 40 pieces, eh? 40 bricks. And then um, if you are doing uh, clay bricks in the header bond, you will need for one square meter, you'll need about uh, 55 bricks for just a square meter. And then for hollow blocks for just a square meter, you'll need just about uh, between 11 and 12 blocks, okay? So you're going to take 11. Now, now what is the cost of one clay brick? One clay brick uh, is going to cost you a really good one. It's going to cost you about 380 shillings each. And um, the same. 380 shillings each of course you can find those that are 350 even 320 you can really find but i'm just considering the best quality now a lot of you do not understand the difference between clay bricks and mud bricks uh clay bricks are actually burnt from clay and mud bricks are burnt from mud if you want to just identify them clearly uh the clay uh, the mud bricks should be more red and the clay bricks um they are light red or they are pinkish, you know, they are pinkish, they have an orange and pinkish in them, I'll show them to you in the picture. 
But so here what you're considering is actually clay bricks. Clay bricks are much more expensive than mud bricks in general. So what I'm going to do for you in this video, I'm going to first discuss for you all this while we are using clay bricks. And then towards the end of the video, I will also discuss for you the same calculation where we are using uh, mud bricks. You see that mud bricks can actually be cheaper. Of course, uh, clay bricks definitely have better properties, but they have over time been proven to be a potential substitute, a reliable substitute for clay bricks for those who do not want to go into the extra costs of using clay bricks. Okay, so let's run into it. Um, the cost of hollow blocks, uh, just one hollow block, we are now considering the ones over 150 millimeters, eh? 150 millimeter thickness. So that's usually 2,200 to 2,500 shillings, okay? So we are going to consider 2,300 shillings, okay? Now, for our wall that we considered, we considered a wall that has 9 square meters that is uh, uh, 3 meters long and 3 meters in height, okay? Uh, so for the clay brick wall, uh, so for the clay brick, you have 40, square, 40 pieces per square meter times the 9 square meters, okay? times the cost of each brick, 380 shillings. For here, we are going to have 55 bricks per square meter, times nine square meters, times 380 shillings, okay? And then on this other side, we are going to have uh, 11 blocks per square meter, times uh, nine square meters that we have, times 2,300 shillings per square meter, okay? Um, what we get here? We have uh, 136,800. Um, right here, we have uh, 188,100 shillings, okay, and right here, we are going to be having 227,700 shillings. So from this calculation, first you can see that these ones are actually more expensive. Now remember what you've not yet considered is the mortar. Mortar is the mixture of cement and sand that actually helps us to bind these, uh, the bricks in masonry work. So we are now going to consider the cost of uh, using the cost of cement that we actually use in binding, uh, in binding those, the, in binding those bricks together. Okay. Uh, so when you are using clay bricks in stretcher bond, uh, roughly one bag of cement, one bag of cement, of cement should take you up to about four square meters of walling. Then if you are using header bond, uh, one bag of cement can take you just about two. About two square meters. Okay, this is from experience and standards. Eh? And then uh, if you are using uh, hollow blocks, one bag of cement can even take you up to nine square meters. So you can see that we really we significantly use less cement when we are doing hollow blocks. Uh, so for us to get uh, for the nine square meter wall that we considered right here, we want to know how much how much, how many bags of cement shall we need to complete our 9 square meter wall. So you are going to have 9 square meters divided by 4, which will give us uh, 2.25 bags of cement, okay? Here you are going to have 9 by 2, which gives us 4.5 bags of cement. And here we are going to have 9 by 9, which will give us 1 bag, 1 bag of cement, okay? So now let's put into consideration the cost. Uh, let's make an assumption that just a bag of cement is 30,000. Okay. 30,000. 30,000 shillings. Okay. So here we are spending on cement, we are, we are spending 67,500 shillings. Uh, here we are spending 135,000 shillings. And here we are actually spending literally 30,000 shillings. Okay. So now this is the amount you spent on both uh, on cement and also on the on the blocks as well. Sorry, on the on the bricks as well. Uh, so now we are going to add these two and see what the totals actually bring us to. Okay, this plus this is going to be two hundred and four thousand three hundred. Uh, here we are going to have three hundred and twenty three one hundred. Okay, shillings. And here we are going to have uh, 257,700 shillings, okay? So you can see that where we are standing at right now, it's actually cheaper to use hollow blocks than using clay bricks in the header bone. But overall, the cheapest is actually using uh, the header bone, which is what we mainly use for usually bungalow houses that go 
not more than one story, just a ground floor and that's it. This is what we usually use. But now remember what you've actually considered is uh, the cost of materials in general. Uh, so if you had to put in other factors of labor and uh, the amount of cement that you actually use for plastering, because these clay bricks usually have a lot of irregularities, so you'll find that the cost of this, these two columns is actually increasing, while for this one is actually decreasing. Let's do an example of labor. Uh, just like we earlier discussed that you'll need about 40 pieces, 40 pieces per square meter, and um, 50 pieces per square meter, and uh, uh, 11 pieces per square meter. So you can see from that that basically where someone is having to lay one block, just one hollow block, uh, someone will have to be laying four, hollow blo four blocks of clay bricks in this pond, and someone he, on this hand will actually be laying about six blocks. Okay, so which one is actually, this one is going to cost you much less in labor, you know? But now if we are to consider labor costs, you realize that labor costs are actually going to change the game also a little more okay let's do that for the labor cost right now let's say for example you're being charged uh, 20,000 per square meter here okay just about 20,000 because I mean where someone is laying one block this one is laying four okay where, where they're charging you 20,000 per maybe per laying per square meter uh, here you might be charged uh, let's say 30,000 per square meter okay this one is even going to be worse. <laughs> this one could even be forty to fifty thousand, you know, per square meter. Okay, so let's make another quick calculation and see. Uh, thirty thousand uh, times the nine square meters. Here we are going to have. Uh, uh, so we are going to have here two hundred and seventy thousand times the nine square meters, eh? which we actually have. Okay. So we have 270,000, here we have uh, times 9, we have 180,000 shillings. Here we have 4 by 9, we have 360,000 for the, for the 9 square meters. So if we are going to keep on adding and adding and adding, you realize that this one gets becomes cheaper and cheaper. This one's become more expensive than actually this one, okay? So if we actually now to get the general total by adding the, the labor costs to the costs of, of materials, uh, labor costs, cost of materials, labor cost, cost of materials, you are going to realize that we are go it's going to be really a game changer, okay? So here we are going to be having uh, 474,300, okay? Then here we are going to be having 683,000, Okay, then here we're going to be having, uh, then here we're going to be having 43,007. Do you see that we're actually going to be spending less money on hollow blocks than the rest of all this? Do you realize that? Now I think you get the point where we are already saying that hollow blocks are much cheaper than the rest of the bricks. Of course, uh, if someone in this situation was to use uh, mud bricks, mud bricks where just a, just a single mud brick would cost you about 250 shillings, you'll find this being a little lower than this. So, but for someone who is planning to use clay bricks and then versus to this one, you realize that this one is actually going to be more cost efficient for you, including the plastering. You know, we've not yet considered the plastering. If you put in factors of plastering, considering that here you're going to use a very thin layer of plastering, in general, you realize that you spend less money on hollow blocks than actually using clay bricks. I hope, I hope the explanation was really straightforward and clean to understand. Um, thank you for your time.